So there's a lot of lessons we learned on the boat. Am I gonna need this tool? Am I gonna need that tool? Am I gonna need solar, new pots and pans? What do I need? And if you're thinking about living on a boat or even in a tiny space, we just wanted to share a couple of the lessons we learned. So here's a couple things we learned that you might find interesting. My point of view and my tips and tricks are coming from the perspective of a lady. When I would clean a fish and fillet it and prep it for storage, I became covered in fish guts and blood and scales. <laughs> I, I am not a pro at doing that in a clean manner. I would immediately run into the shower. At first I would grab the body wash that we had and try and scrub everything off, but I found that I still smelt like fish quite a bit. A lot of the scales and the dry blood were difficult to get off, so I used dish soap, and that worked great. It cut through all the fish grease, <laughs> the blood, and the scales, and everything. If you need a heavy-duty cleaner for getting fish blood out of your hair, dish soap. Uh, another tip that we really wish that we had done that I would have changed if we were still on the boat, uh, I would get Starlink. Now available in the water and I'm pretty sure it covers everywhere. So if we were to do this again, that is definitely an investment that I would make. We had bought the sat phone when we did our Atlantic crossing, which was cool. It worked great. All we could do was send text messages. So I was literally trying to get weather information in front of us by text message from somebody else that I was sharing uh, an account with and they were kind of helping us avoid some storms. That's all we could do with Starlink. You could have had a full video call. It's a monthly plan. So I, we would, yeah, yeah, we would do that. <laughs>
I, you know, the internet suggested to tear the windlass apart, get all the brushes clean and put it all back together. I started doing exactly that until I was about halfway and I was like, this, this doesn't seem right. So looked up the website for the windlass, just basically did their three to five step process of testing, which a voltmeter instantly showed me where the problem was. Quick tip. Whenever you're working on a sailboat and you have something pulled apart, make a wiring diagram and a plumbing diagram of what those things are. Even if you don't know, at least you have that diagram and eventually can start figuring things out as you go when there are problems that arise. Some items you're not going to use all the time whether it be winter clothes, hobby stuff, be warm weather clothes if it's freezing cold. So you're gonna have to store those items. And we learned quite a few things the hard way. Moisture and weather will cause things to mold. A way to prevent that is plastic. We opted for those giant Ziploc bags that you could vacuum out the extra air. This allowed for a barrier for any moisture and compressed items into a smaller size and just pretend like water is going to get in anywhere because eventually a hatch will be left open. Water will find its way everywhere so don't assume because a place is dry at the moment that it's going to stay dry forever. That I don't think happened anywhere. <laughs> One of my favorite things that we had on Naughty that ended up saving us a lot of money overall was the solar setup. We went with a lithium solar setup. We used four 410 watt solar panels uh, and four 200 amp hour lithium batteries. This topic could be a topic for days on solar versus generator or both. You don't need a generator in my opinion. We never had a problem with electrical and how much power we had. Even when there were four people on the boat and we had two days of you know nothing but clouds, uh, we still had plenty of power for everybody and to do everything that we wanted to do. With having solar on board, it gave us the opportunity to not use cooking gas. We used an electrical burner uh, 99 percent of the time unless we were baking something my opinion on generators is that you have to store fuel somewhere on your boat you have to manage it like a normal uh, engine anywhere you've got to service it you've got to oil they're loud you've got to maintain them and keep them running all of that ultimately adds to an ex another expense obviously sun is going to be a big factor with solar where are you going that doesn't have sun so I don't think you really need to worry about all of that, especially if you have a big enough battery bank. Having a solar system also gave us the ability to have a water maker. During the nighttime, we maybe lost 8% of our batteries and we were always charged back up at like 10 a.m. Again, solar is going to be one of those things that's going to be a little daunting to everybody. Not everybody understands the electrical system. They're not that hard to learn. Uh, there are people on YouTube that have made things extremely easy for a lot of us laymans to really try and understand. Uh, I'd like to give uh, a shout out and some credit to exploristlife.com. Uh, they have a YouTube channel that is amazing on solar setups and helping you understand all of that wiring. They have a ton of kits as well that could really help you out. I love food, but one cooking cooking gadget type thing that I really, really liked was a pressure cooker. It was something we kind of went for. I'd never used one before boat life, and I used it all the time, at least once a week, if not twice a week. I was constantly using that thing, and I loved it. I know that there's the Instapot and other devices that are similar to a pressure cooker, so if, if one of those works for you or you're interested in one of those, hell yeah, go for it. Uh, the reason why I was so fond of the pressure cooker, it brought cook time down quite a bit, meaning we didn't use as much solar or propane, F gas, whatever cooking gas. And it had a locking lid on it, so splash factor was cut down a lot. Obviously, we had to make sure it didn't fall onto the ground because it would just explode and become 
a mess. I made hummus, refried beans, veggies, so many things. The cook time was just cut down and everything came out so delicious and amazing. If anyone has any pressure cooker recipes they want to share, I will collect them from you and keep them for myself. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know, the pressure cooker was really cool. Stainless steel is one of those things you need to implant in your brain at all times with whatever you buy. In my opinion, I would buy some stainless steel machine screws, make sure I had those on board with some nuts. You don't need some crazy assortment, just get your little multi-pack from Amazon or something like that. Get yourself some different size bolts that are common throughout your boat. So get some extra washers, lock washers, nuts and bolts, and uh, yeah, you'll be good. And if it's worth it for the money, sure. But I found out a lot of things were not necessary that I had already bought. We didn't cover everything. There's plenty of other videos out there. But these are some tips that we find very helpful and important to us.